a love romance wedding marriage introduction. If you want to be a loving person, it has to be a major part of your life. You need a naturally soft soul. If you don't love animals then you don't have true love inside of you which is no big deal because many people don't have it, especially in a modern world where screens, entertainment, hedonism and addictions have largely replaced a loving family life. The main topics of this book are Falling in love Finding a soulmate Finding a steady guy with a paycheck or a girl who will mother you Feeling dreamily in love the reality of romantic love for many couples, being alone together for the sake of being paired up. Love, dream of the perfect feeling forever. Love inspiration. Romance. Love quotes, poems, music. The engagement, the proposal, the wedding. Married life. The legal aspects of marriage. I was brought up reading the Bible. They told us that most of the human race is evil. There are only a few righteous people in the bunch. That's your dating pool. People have self-centered, selfish to evil motives way over animals. I remember as far back as Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack, they were profiling con artist Don Wands. Many spouses try to kill each other. I understand the desire for deep intimate soulmate love but be realistic about it. The fantasy and the illusion end up different for most people. I created a love problem book for that. Many people, especially in the modern world, grow up empty because they fill themselves up with technological gadgets, food, alcohol, porn, etc. rather than experiences and relationships with real people and pets. Other people, like many men, are brought up with romantic love as a distant second to making money, getting high and otherwise having fun doing their version of exciting, adventurous things. If you feel kind of empty, you can culture love by expressing it. Start with a pet. Before you can truly love a person, see if you can love an animal unconditionally. How do you treat it when you're in a bad mood or it gets in your way? Can you make an unromantic person romantic? I don't believe leopards change their spots. You are what you are. Whenever I fell in love, I always fell out of love within a year then I made a conscious choice to be a decent, respectful, loving person. It's a choice followed up with action day by day. This is in line with my belief that men are eternally horny for new sex and are not naturally monogamous. Religions and societies try very hard to teach monogamy but it's very hard. I recently watched the documentary called something like Let's Talk About Cosby. This guy was called America's Dad praising family life while he was drugging women and raping them. At least 65 have come forward up until now. We have to be realistic about deep, intimate romantic soulmate love over a lifetime. At the very least, the guy will be watching a lot of porn to quell his natural sex drive. Almost everybody thinks they're entitled to love and romance but many people have naturally cold, greedy, evil, angry hearts. Many are afraid of intimate contact with another person. The con artist or psychopath's greatest skill is charm. I've watched many true crime shows where people said that this monster started out as a kind, loving person before they revealed their true selves. I've met many less than sincere ambitious, gold-digging women over my lifetime. You can generally spot fake people quickly. I say don't allow yourself to be fooled by someone who likes you for something other than the pure, simple you. It's better to be alone than to be in a horrible relationship. The most loving people as a group are Christian people. Some, not all, try to embrace the unconditional love idea that Jesus had. Romantic love at the start also known as infatuation or being smitten is a biological spray of hormones. Great lovers stay on with a commitment after the hormones die down. Nobody ever told me the truth about love. They say that by the time you hit 18, you've watched 10,000 love movies and TV shows not to mention that almost every song is about love. My first discovery on my own was that it was easy to fall in love then after several months, I always fell out of love. I realized that the natural love hormones pee and oxytocin die down then you have a dilemma. 
Do you really love this girl and make a commitment to stay or are you a slave to your hormones and moving on to the next new girl that you're attracted to? I developed my philosophy of life which is that God created me a certain way. My obligation is to know who I am and live by this by releasing this natural energy almost every day as opposed to following the world's artificial values or being a lazy nobody couch potato slob. Love is the same way. It's like inspiration. It might be something inside of you that you feel but so what? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Everybody has got the best intentions in their minds. All that matters is action, what you do. Love has to be fed all the time. I release my natural energy all the time in order to feel good about my life. If you want a soulmate type of love, you have to make the love you feel real. Human beings are not mind readers. They want to be reminded that you love them all the time through what you do. I love my cat unconditionally. She doesn't let me neglect her. She constantly wants love. She gives me foot bumps all the time. I have to play with her and pat her all the time. A human won't give you a foot bump. It's a given that your lover wants love and attention. If you don't do it, why did you bother getting into a relationship in the first place? I can watch any dating show on TV and see the delusions young people have about romantic love as this mystical force that is going to propel them into a higher state of consciousness for life but it won't. It's always the same process, at least for men. At some point you realize she's not all that hot because your natural sexuality is boundless by nature so you have to make a decision. I see four options for any guy in a relationship. I'm gonna live by my own sexuality alone as the primal viking I am. I'm going to be a stand-up guy and work on making this a loving relationship all the time because that's what I want. I don't want to be alone. I prefer a companion to porn, tinder, alcohol, cocaine and all those other fantasies I have about how great life could be. I'm a generic asshole. I married her now I can go back to being the slob I am. I bring home money. We're superficial roommates but I like it that way. No pressure to perform. Increasingly I see users, guys marrying girls and letting them earn the money, do the housework, etc. while the guy manipulates the girl into thinking he loves her and she needs him. The term gaslighting refers to what these guys do, make the girl think she's nothing without the guy. Every man is a sex-crazed slut in the privacy of his mind by virtue of the hormone testosterone which is the sex hormone for both men and women. It makes us horny. Men have more than women. The psychobablists created a term called the Coolidge effect which is about a bull having sex with every new female he sees. When he's done, he leaves her alone and gets aroused when he sees the next one. Monogamy as a way of life is an artificial way of being thrust onto us. If we want loving marriages, we have to accept this fact but get past it by working on being loving all the time in our relationships. I realized four main things about intimate love. Strong, passionate love at first love exists sometimes when two people meet who are strongly attracted to each other but it's physiological hormones. Hormones always go down so the passion does too. When it happens, you have to decide whether you're going to stay in the relationship or follow your instincts. Most relationships are not high-intensity passion. They're lukewarm love. People stay together for many reasons other than love like fear of being alone, social insecurity, financial help, etc. Everybody is alone by design. We're all loners. Most of us watch thousands of love TV shows and movies which constantly give us unrealistic views of love, making us think that it will fill some hole of existential emptiness within ourselves. You alone either deal with your sense of individual identity or not. Romantic love can't fill the search for purpose and worth within ourselves. I understand that everybody has to work hard to earn a living but I will not destroy myself over material things. My life focus is to release these five natural energies. Inspired. Loving. Sexual. Hedonistic, minor frivolous amusement. Practical things I must do to survive. You simply make love a major part of your life. 
You don't waste time watching silly sports shows or fictional garbage. Life becomes a conscious journey to feel the intensity of your emotions and part of that is love, the desire to love and be loved. It's easy. Give love to get it back. Romance is basically two people spending time together just for the sake of being together. It doesn't require anything fancy or over the top. Great lovers do this day after day with their partners. It's not something you do once or two a year on Valentine's Day and on your wedding anniversary as an obligatory thing. It's doing the things together that close friends do. This book covers things like how to constantly create a sense of love, passion, fun, excitement, and enchantment in a relationship. Romance is the dream, fantasy, delusion, and illusion of almost every man and woman, to meet someone or be with someone you're perfectly comfortable with that you can do almost anything with to express your love and not feel corny about it. It's just being yourself with someone you love. Men get lonely like women but they're brought up to be stoic so most cannot express a soft kind of love. This continues into the wedding and marriage. It's the unwritten code of being indoctrinated as a man in a violent, capitalist society. Romantic men are bad for business. They're not productive, ambitious, competitive, self-destructive, or angry enough for the stereotype of a man that that powers that be of society want in order to get things done. If a man can't be romantic right from the start, he has missed his chance. He might be a good provider but he won't walk off into the land of enchantment with his mate. Romance novels are a multi-billion dollar business because of this. Most women relegate romance to fantasy. Most of us are bumbling fools when it comes to romance because we're afraid of opening up and telling someone we love them with passion and abandon. We're afraid of being rebuffed and rejected. People in general aren't used to being swept away in a romantic haze so they aren't ready for it if it happens. If you pour out your love in some way and your lover doesn't go with it, it's awkward unequal participation in the moment. The guy gives it his all and the girl doesn't go with the spirit of it so the guy does this a few times then shuts it off. You have to find the right person that you can be corny and hokey with without feeling uncomfortable about it. Romance is always keeping it fresh, doing little things for each other. Romance doesn't start 10 minutes before you hit the sack. It's an all-day process. You have to develop the intimate connection all the time in order to be a true romantic. There are two types of romantic love to me. The first type is at the end of the day when you're cuddling up to your love pie which is great and fine and generally works with anyone you're physically attracted to. You can be nice and gentle with anyone and feel alright but it's still not that lightning bolt connection of soulmate love which is two people sharing their love of life, not just being with each other for a few minutes at night but spending a large part of their days together, doing what they love, enjoying each other's company. This is the fantasy we all share, two lovers spending their time together doing soulful pursuits and aimless activities, making love, loving each other during the mundane, routine tasks of the day, enjoying the process of sharing their lives together. Treat each other how you should be treated. Share yourselves with each other. Move from me to we. Give your love together the honor it deserves. Love is great if you can find it with one person and stick with them for life. Some people do. There are pictures on the local news every night about couples married 50 years or longer. There will always be lean times in amongst the great times. It's like a circle. I wrote so much about it because I kept getting ideas and reinterpreting what I read and saw in the media so one book on just love itself became three. Somewhere along the way, you have to stop, think about your relationship and focus on being kind, loving and doing nice things for your lover, over and over again. No one else can feel your version or experience of love. You have love inside of you. You give it away. At some point, somebody might respond. You might have a beautiful experience but I have barely seen unconditional love anywhere with lovers. I see it with kids and animals. With people, it's like you always to prove yourself like the song what have you done for me lately. That's the problem, finding a wonderful person who will love you for you no matter what. People want it desperately. Many will destroy their lives looking for it. 
loving yourself quietly without worrying about looking for a lover is a pretty good life. It's better to be peaceful and accept your life rather than always be thinking about how lonely you are because you're missing out on love. I look around. I know that most of the couples I see anywhere don't really love each other all that much. They're together for lots of reasons besides love like the fear of being alone. A comfortable life is better for most people than a life looking for real, intense, passionate experiences. I'm a guy who wrote an animal pet guide. I must have read at least 5,000 quotes and one-liners about animals, pets, dogs, cats, etc. at goodreads.com, brainyquotes.com, etc. You should see what people say about animals comparing them to humans. As far as love goes, if you read those quotes, you think that people have much better loving relationships with animals than with people. There's a saying. If you want someone to love you forever, buy a dog, feed it and keep it around. Dick Dale. Here's a quote from Dean Koontz, A Big Little Life, A Memoir of a Joyful Dog. No matter how close we are to another person, few human relationships are as free from strife, disagreement, and frustration as is the relationship you have with a good dog. Few human beings give of themselves to another as a dog gives of itself. I also suspect that we cherish dogs because their unblemished souls make us wish, consciously or unconsciously, that we were as innocent as they are and make us yearn for a place where innocence is universal and where the meanness, the betrayals, and the cruelties of this world are unknown. Look at us human beings. The Old Testament of the Bible says we're a bunch of evil pricks. Nothing has changed. I was infatuated and in love when I was young. Now I'm old as I write this. I realize existential loneliness is a part of being a human being. You always live alone in your head. If you want someone to match your spirit, conversation, and all that, it's hard. Look at how moody we are. Add your desire for sex on top of that, especially as you age and whoever you're with ages and gets uglier. It's not just that. Compare your natural desire for sex versus who much your lovers wants to be with you sexually. My sex drive is still as high as hell but that's another book that I call The Gogon Effect, this primal thing inside. People never stop looking for love. You can go on YouTube or the internet in general and look up bad dates or dates from hell. People get killed looking for love. There is a big sign on a church near where I live that says be grateful. Sometimes when I watch bachelor type shows on TV, I think to myself I remember when I was love crazy thinking I needed monogamous love to fulfill me. Society has done a great brainwashing job separating us from our true natures. The most honest men in history that have written about what they really felt are pretty well all dead, Ovid, Oscar Wilde, Paul Gauguin, the Marquis de Sada, the few guys that admitted how depraved our minds are. We're not evil. Nature made us that way by giving us all that testosterone. How can any man really be monogamous when he's got that lust floating around in his brain? Love is great if you can find it with one person and stick with them for life. Some people do. There are pictures on the local news every night about couples married 50 years or longer. There will always be lean times in amongst the great times. It's like a circle. I wrote so much about it because I kept getting ideas and reinterpreting what I read and saw in the media so one book on just pure monogamous love itself became three. Somewhere along the way, you have to stop, think about your relationship and focus on being kind, loving and doing nice things for your lover over and over again. It's like me trying to be a Christian man with an eternal soul. I have to keep focusing on it because the human race is so horrible with all the competition, greed, and just plain old evil where people like to put other people down because it raises them up a notch for a minute or two. If you don't believe me, watch some of those reality shows on TV. Their appeal is the people fighting each other, putting each other down. The 43 volumes are as follows. Volume 1. Love was a primal feeling, now it's steeped in other people's BS. Volume 2. Soulmate Love Guide. Volume 3. Love is a synonym for primal attraction but real love is a strong long-term, unconditional commitment. 
Volume 4. Love One Liner Guide. Volume 5. Love Inspiration, Essays to Meditate on Love. Volume 6. A Love Article Guide. Volume 7. A Relationship Advice Guide. Volume 8. A Relationship Advice Website Guide. Volume 9. Love Website Guide 1. Volume 10. Love Website Guide 2. Volume 11. Love Website Guide 3. Volume 12. A Love Website Guide from Feedspot.com. Volume 13. Love, Romance, and Relationship Websites from Dmas ODP. Volume 14. Romance and Dating Idea Website Guide. Volume 15. A Love, Sex, and Marriage Organization Guide. Volume 16. Love Slash Relationship Advice Podcast Video Guide. Volume 17. Romantic Enchantment Guide 1. Volume 18. Romantic Enchantment Guide 2. Volume 19. Dating Romantic Ideas Guide. Volume 20. Love Quote and One Liner Guide. Volume 21. Kissing and Hugging Guide. Volume 22. Romance Marketplace Guide. Volume 23. Gift Product Guide. Volume 24. Romance Resource Guide. Volume 25. Love Romance Movie Guide. Volume 26. Love Romantic Music Guide. Volume 27. Romantic Getaway Guide Slash Honeymoon Guide. Volume 28. Nevada and Hawaii, Romance Meccas. Volume 29. Academic Love and Sex Guide Slash Psychobabalists Write About Love and Sex. Volume 30. The Anti-Love Guide, Many People Don't Want to Be in a Love Relationship with a Person. Volume 31. Love Literature Guide. Volume 32. Before the Wedding, Proposal, Engagement, Premarital Programs, The Law. Volume 33. Wedding Guide. Volume 34. A Wedding Resource Guide. Volume 35. A Wedding Website Guide. Volume 36. A Wedding Website Guide from Feedspot.com. Volume 37. Wedding websites from dmoz-odp.org slash society slash relationships slash weddings. Volume 38. Where to have the wedding in the United States. Volume 39. Worldwide Wedding Services Guide. Volume 40. Organize a Party. Volume 41. Marital Law Guide. Volume 42. Married Life Guide. Volume 43. Marriage Website Guide. I also cover some older public domain books on love and marriage.